Out in the woods, we collected this plant that has this odd historical use of exploding. Let's check this out and a few other historical methods of doing a controlled explosion for a rather unique use. I'm gearing up to complete my ongoing camera project to build all the components to make a photograph entirely from scratch. But along the way, I came across some interesting information about a thing called lycopodium powder, which was supposedly used as a form of early camera flash. Early forms of photography required a lot of light, which meant either a really long exposure time or a bright light source. But early photography also predates a light bulb, so they actually ended up resorting to chemical explosions as a source of a bright light source. So in this video, I wanna explore a few different methods that were used historically to basically recreate this. But first, thank you to Opera for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard about the Opera browser yet, you should really check them out. I've been using it for a while now and it has genuinely transformed my daily routine. One of the best features is Aria, Opera's native browser AI. It's super easy to access from the sidebar and gives you clear answers instantly. Whether I'm looking for real-time information on whatever topic I'm researching next, or if I'm struggling to get an idea written out for an upcoming project, Aria has me covered and can quickly flesh out an initial draft. Just the other day, I was working on a project and I needed a quick, concise summary of some information and Aria delivered a nice and brief answer for me. Another game changer for me has been the Tab Islands. You know how tabs can become a cluttered mess? When I'm researching multiple upcoming projects, I can collect a huge mass of them. But with Tab Islands, Opera automatically groups related tabs, making it much easier to navigate. It's perfect for when I'm doing research on multiple topics for multiple videos across multiple sites. And let's not forget about privacy. Opera's built-in VPN is a lifesaver. It's free, unlimited, and ensures my browsing is private and secure without any extra extensions. Opera also features a built-in ad blocker and an integrated music player for super convenience. Thanks again to Opera for sponsoring this video. If you want a faster, safer, and smarter browsing experience, download Opera today using my link below. So our first option for a potential flash compound is going to be lycopodium powder. Lycopodium powder is collected from a very common plant, which is called a variety of different names, such as the clubfoot moss. This plant reproduces through spores. There's a spores of this plant that can be collected, dried, and then used for the explosive effect we're looking for. Despite the claims that this plant is actually very widespread, I ended up spending a considerable amount of time searching for it in multiple states I was in with no luck. Then while out hunting last fall, Theo came across a whole field of them and collected a small sample for me. I spend a week out here looking for deer. The only thing that I end up bagging is a bunch of vegetables. Great. Unfortunately, it's a little bit after their prime spore season, so they don't quite have a ton of spore that was able to collect, just a small quantity. The mechanism for what makes these plants actually explosive is basically the same concept as a dust explosion, where you basically have a super fine particle that is flammable that is dispersed widely into the air once ignited to be able to consume all that. Where a lot of explosives require an oxygen to add oxygen, this uses the fact that it's well dispersed in oxygen-rich air that it's able to provide a pretty big explosion. The same effect works with flour and is why uh, flour mills are prone to exploding. So the spores of the plant are super fine and they contain large amounts of flammable fats. When they are dried and dispersed to the air near an ignition source, they produce a brilliant bright explosion. Historically, this powder has a lot of use in theatrical plays when you need to replicate lightning or magic shows when you need a nice flash. And according to at least a few sources, it was used for the camera flash. However, when I look into these sources, uh, they, they all kind of trace back to one reference to it, which actually includes it mixed with magnesium and a few other ingredients. So I'm not sure how much it was actually used by itself. So that's gonna be the main test to say, just to kind of fact check this and see if this powder is even a viable option for flash. So we'll be putting this and several other compounds to the test and then measure how much light they're able to produce. So let's try out a few other ones. Next up, as more of a control, we're gonna do the kind of OG explosive gunpowder. And there isn't too much evidence of gunpowder being used for uh, bright light sources. It'll be interesting to do this just mostly as a comparison to see how that will compare. Fortunately, through several of my past videos, I've been able to uh, collect and purify the needed ingredients. And that includes the sulfur ore that I collected from a volcanic site near Death Valley. And then the saltpeter that I produced by extracting the nitre compounds from chicken droppings, which involved a lot of soaking and boiling of chicken boop. Then the last ingredient is charcoal fuel, which is just made by burning wood in the absence of oxygen. So I have those three ingredients, pulverized and ground up and milled into a nice fine powder here. So it should be ready to test that and you can see how much of a flush that'll give in comparison to our other compounds. Next up is another compound that was used similarly to gunpowder, 
and that's gun cotton. It was actually discovered accidentally when nitric acid and sulfuric acid were spilled and then cleaned up with a cotton cloth. But once it dried out, it was found to very easily and suddenly combust. Also in some of my last videos, I was able to make sulfuric acid and then nitric acid. So I have all the ingredients basically to do this because I've also grown a bunch of cotton in the past too. So we basically combine these three ingredients, rinse it, dry it, and we should have what uh, is called gun cotton which is also another product that's often used in magic shows because it produces a very bright flash. Actually making gun con proved to be a bit more challenging than I expected, especially for something that was discovered by accident. My first attempt failed because the supposedly 100% cotton fabric I bought was clearly some kind of plastic blend that was almost flame resistant. Then my second batch overheated and burned itself up in the process. My third batch was mostly disintegrated in the process and still wasn't that flammable. Only on my fourth attempt did it actually appear to mostly work. And next we have magnesium. And this is what was most often used historically for the bright camera flashes, was some combination of magnesium and usually an oxidizer. At this point, I have not made magnesium from scratch myself, but I do have the compound that contains at least a trace amount of it. And that's gonna be some brine that I collected at the Great Salt Lake several years ago. So I do have plans to eventually extract at least a trace amount of magnesium from what I collected, but that's a little bit out of scope for this project. So we're just gonna use some store-bought magnesium just so we can use this as a comparison to our other methods and see uh, just how bright this will be in comparison. Magnesium works like a lot of metals in that uh, it, it oxidizes very violently and brightly. So we just have to ignite this, preferably as a powder, so we should get a very bright white flash. Lastly, we have aluminum, and this is uh, also another control one. Making aluminum itself is still a little ways off. We are actually getting pretty close now that we have electricity, but uh, this will be still an upcoming video. Today, if you're making pyrotechnics or anything that you need a flash powder for, you're often gonna use aluminum. We'll have that as our last control. Next, we just need to build the igniting system, and we can start testing these compounds out. How to ignite these different compounds is the next major challenge. Working with any explosive like this is hazardous and often put photographers in danger. So a way to ignite it with some distance was preferred. The first method was aerosol based of basically fleeing the power towards the open flame of an ethanol lamp. For a simple design, we attached a leather tube to a metal funnel and attached a lamp to the end of it. Then with just a puff of air, the flammable powders are spread into the air for the flame to ignite. A rather amusing and similar concept design was the Lamp Meteora. Very gun looking, it actually is a small catapult that flings the flash powder into a lamp. Last design, which is most recognizable and eventually became the standard, was the flash lamp. Its design was a simple trough where the flash powder is placed with a handle to keep your hands clear of it. Then wires are run to it, connected to batteries with some kind of fuse. Then it just takes a simple button press to complete the circuit, heating up the fuse until it ignites the flash powder. For our fuse, we use some extra thin pieces of iron. The only challenge is we haven't made a good dry cell battery yet, so ours will be a bit bulkier with our Daniel cell array. Testing apparatuses and our different powders set up now, so now we can do some live testing. So we have this, we have all the lights basically blocked out, so we'll do this in pitch black. And we have a, a camera here set with a low exposure, so we can compare visually how bright each one was. Um, so hopefully we can get this to work, and not burn down the place. First up, the Lycodium powder using the funnel wool.
It produced some very nice fireballs and actually lit the image pretty well. Second, the Lycodium powder, again, this time using the meteor lamp. Wow, I actually jumped a little This device actually seemed to work almost better at making large fireballs. Next, we mix some magnesium with the Lycodium powder, like that original source suggested. This yielded a pretty similar brightness with an added burst of white magnesium to the mix as well. Then we tried some gunpowder in the meteor lamp. However, this was a pretty pitiful result. Gunpowder seems to work a lot better when it's not aerosoled into the air. After that, we switched to the flash lamp and tried gunpowder again. This produced a pretty nice flash, but also a ton of smoke afterwards. Next, the gun cotton. I started running into issues with our fuses not always igniting, so ended up just switching to using the match. It produced a really nice flash of red light much more powerful than the gunpowder or the lycopodium. Also compared to the gunpowder, it produced considerably less smoke, although there was still a fair amount afterwards. Then there was magnesium. It proved to be a bit difficult to ignite on its own, so use the rest of my gun cotton to ignite it. This produced a nice two-step burst of the bright gunpowder, quickly followed by the bright white magnesium. Compared to the other flashes, this one was significantly off the charts. Oh, that was bright. That was definitely right. Lastly, the aluminum. This one proved to be harder to ignite than the magnesium, so we had to use gunpowder to ignite it, as I had used up all the gun cotton. It burned an intense flare, not quite as bright as magnesium, but for a much longer duration. That was pretty bright. So I have to say I'm pretty impressed with the Lycodium powder. It definitely makes a really vivid fireball and it does produce a decent amount of light. However, compared to the other options, I'm not sure it's really the best option for photography because magnesium just really kind of steals the show there. It's just so much brighter and it's also a white light. Considering how violent the magnesium uh, flash was, I'm surprised uh, people aren't reacting like I did in more of these photos. To be fair, they probably use the flash a little bit further <laughs> from your face. This, this little guy is a lot of fun, I gotta say. It's just satisfying to shoot a fireball this nice little gun-like guy. Um, if there's enough interest, I might see about uh, producing some of these to potentially sell. So let me know if you're interested in that. So I think I kind of go back to my initial interpretation of how like codium powder was used, where it wasn't so much the uh, primary light source, but it's more the ignition source for igniting more difficult to light things like magnesium, as that source describes, because magnesium is just so much brighter. So when you have access to that, it just seems like the obvious choice. But because magnesium is a bit difficult to ignite. Uh, I can see how the Lycodium powder would offer a nice ignition source to get things hot enough for that. If anybody knows of any better sources for the use of Lycodium powder for a flash, let me know. I definitely would be interested to check that out. But in the end, I feel like this is more of a theater effect product than uh, actual bright flash for photography. So in some videos coming up pretty soon, I'm gonna be diving back into the camera project and trying to produce some early forms of film and trying them out in various scenarios. And now thanks to this experiment, I have some ideas of what to use for it additional light sources if necessary. This is also gonna be a, a little bit of a light introduction to the more explosives that we'll be doing as we start to explore the age of gunpowder and kind of the evolution of how we got to guns and cannons. So this is kind of an initial testing ground to see just how much we can get away with on the YouTube algorithm. A lot of the rules are kind of vague, um, but there is a decent chance that uh, the videos will get age locked or demonetized or just deleted. So if you are, are interested in videos like this and you want to see more of them in the future, consider supporting on Patreon. Kind of gives us a little insulation from any demonetization that might happen on YouTube. And if there's enough support, it allows us to produce content that potentially can't even live on YouTube. So if this is something that interests you and you like our channel, 
channel, consider supporting us on Patreon as we approach these new topics. And as always, thank you to my current supporters on Patreon. You guys all make this possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.